I think it's a critically important skill for pain practitioners to know how to switch someone from either one opioid to a different opioid or from one route of administration to a different route or even between dosage formulations of the same opioid within the same route. The reasons we switch people have to do either from a lack of therapeutic response, the patient is having an adverse effect, perhaps it's a patient with a life-limiting illness and now they can't swallow tablets or capsules, perhaps it's someone who's going in for surgery, we need to go with the parenteral route of administration, or post-operatively going from parenteral to oral or even transdermal. And when I teach opioid conversion calculations, I talk about a five-step process. First is to carefully assess the pain complaint because perhaps adding a different drug is the answer instead of switching to a different opioid. So assess the patient's pain complaint. If you decide it is appropriate to move on, the second step would be to calculate very carefully and accurately how much long-acting and short-acting opioid the patient is getting on an average daily basis. The third step is setting up that ratio based on our best available evidence of equipotency between opioids and routes of administration. Step four is after you get that magical number that you've calculated, you can do one or three things with it. You can either decrease that number, increase that number, or go with that number, assuming that you have a suitable tablet or capsule uh, strength that would meet that um, magical need. And then the fifth step, I think, is the most important, which is monitoring your patient outcomes. You know, ph my pharmacy students love to think that drug math, there's one right answer. And you certainly would think that's the case, but indeed it's not. I I think it's a very patient-specific decision where when you calculate that amount of the new opioid by the new route of administration, as again, I said, you can either increase or decrease it depending on patient-specific variables. And sometimes, despite your best efforts, you still miss the mark. That's why your patient monitoring is very important. And over the course of the next few days, you can modify your best guess to best meet patient outcomes.